morning. Um, it's a bit cold, isn't it? Um, this this is what I wear when I go out. I was just saying yesterday that uh, it's that cold out that you know my poor bald head gets uh, a bit freezing. So I just started demonstrating my flaps. I'm in a bit of trouble with my right hand flap actually. I think the loop's gone, but uh, I usually dash out with the dog for uh, you know ten minutes. So there you go. That's. Uh, so bad it is, I've just seen a butterfly outside looking a bit panicky. Uh, if you remember yesterday, uh, we were, you know, we were under, we were under six shave and that, and, you know, it's probably, you know, if it was a bit short of money, never going to be that short of money, I don't think. I'd keep on shaving with that. So we got six days out of it, three shaves a day, three passes, so that's like 18 shaves. Dogs decided to come and join us for some reason. Um, and um, what we're doing today, well, what we're not doing is we're not going to use this. This is the latest addition to the uh, <coughs> the uh, whatever you call it, the collection. This is the the slam blade, and I've sort of hung back on this a little bit because I just really don't understand it. Uh, and hopefully, when I start shaving with it, I will understand it a bit more. But you can see it's wider at one end than the other, so it's a slant in it. What what that means is it, it sort of Gets it completely even contact with your face. Now I haven't used it yet. It's, uh, it's nicely made actually. The, the, the barrel, the handle, is uh, got like this groove in it. It's got a really good grip on it. Although you shouldn't be gripping it that hard. Um, and you basically you unscrew the bottom, and then the head comes off. The thing I'm a bit disappointed really that the heads, the inside the head doesn't look very well made. The quality is about as good as a lord. The, the rest of it's nice, but the, uh, the head's a bit but me, I'm, I'm slightly disappointed. Slightly disappointed. So sometime over the weekend we're gonna we're gonna use this. We're gonna give it a nice a nice good slow run out with probably something like a feather or um uh, <coughs> or a maker blade. Um so what we're we doing today. Um well we're moving on now because we've we've sort of proved well, not proved the point but we've we've looked at how many shaves you can get off one blade and so a week, basically. If you can spin one out for a week or seven shaves, six or seven shaves, then you're doing really well. And I think it's partially due to the fact that you, you know, we're not, we're not stressing the blades. We're not trying to get the blade to do too much work, and then get a better shave as a consequence of it. So we're just lathering up now. Um, just checked on YouTube last night as well, and uh, Paul, Paul from uh, Denbyshire, Paul H, has, uh, has done a little. Nice little video actually with his maker. His maker future. That's amazing actually. Quite impressed. Um, and he was telling everyone about coming up here, so <coughs> buying all this stuff. And the, the guy who gave me the David who gave me the uh, the fat boy has uh, has been in the area as well, although he didn't call on me. He's he has been up to the shop and bought some maker. Uh, sorry, not maker, some uh, Arco. Arco soap and Arco cologne and everything. It's just amazing how cheap it was. And the other bit of news as well is we've got a Facebook group. We decided eventually to set up a Facebook group. So if you go onto Facebook and you've got a Facebook account, if you put in the big shave in groups, it should come up. It should be a picture of me in there. Uh, <coughs> so you can join that. That'll be interesting to see how many people from today's, today's uh, video. Actually, actually shave. Yeah, sorry, actually join the Facebook group. Um, okay, so what are we using today? We're using, and I've had withdrawal symptoms really on this. This is the Maker Future. I think this is probably, you know, this is me, me favourite. By short, short head. I want to use the, the Fat Boy a couple of times just to gauge that. The Fat Boy did really well, and we're starting, we're starting on a six. And the first thing you notice about the future is the weight of it. It's really heavy. And you also, when you haven't used it for a while, you think, mm, this head's a bit big here, you know, how are you going to get in close? But you just, you just have to do. Okay, let's knock your glasses up a bit. Okay, so we're going. The problem about doing all this talking is only the you know, shaving cream's dried up a little bit. So just wet the head. So everything else, how's everything else going with everyone? What's happening around the world? 
the great world that we all live in. We're all, uh, everything seems to be all about uh, September. September the 11th, doesn't it? 9-11. There's all radio programmes about it, over there, television programmes. Uh, I was in New York earlier that year. And it was in the Jul uh, in the February of the J January. And I actually went to the top of the trade towers. It was quite, uh, it was quite poignant, like, to have been somewhere, done something that no one else can ever do again. Because, you know, because obviously they've been, been destroyed. Very sad day, it was at uh, uh, <coughs> the time it happened. <coughs> I was working in Southport, uh, at Southport College, and I kept getting uh, text messages and then got phone calls saying the plane or emails to the plane had crashed into, into the Twin Towers, and into one of the Twin Towers. And you just naturally assumed it was going to be a little light aircraft that got out of control. And when I managed to sort of check out the television, immediately shocked. The most shocking thing, I think, when I got home and saw the devastation, saw the, you know, those films and things falling down, just bit that down a little bit, was uh, how few people had died. Being in that area and walking through, walking through the two buildings, I was just sort of genuinely shocked. Because there was like a railway station ran through the bottom of it. Uh, and I suppose it would have been an hour or two later, and the street had been full of people. And visitors and all sorts of stuff. You would have, there would have been, you know, I was expecting like 50,000, 100,000 people dead. Um, okay, so we, we should talk about the shaving really, shouldn't we? Um, so we've been shaving on the six. I don't have any problem with these high settings really, but you know, I don't, don't have to have. So I'm, I'm taking this right down to the, the lowest setting and I'm going down the jaw and now I can't get some of them. I'm taking it to. I'll take it to three, which is the halfway point. Oh, that's better. That's much better. Uh, we're using a Derby blade as well, so this is a really cheap blade. And uh, we'll see how the, the maker reacts to it. It's funny using, not using the maker for a while. I think the other thing about the maker as well, what, <coughs> what gives it the edge on the other razors, in particular, it takes pretty rubbishy blades, pretty crappy blades, and, and it and they seem to shave as good as, as feathers. Now these derby blades, if you go and look at them on eBay, you get you know you get two hundred for about a ten or something. It's incredibly cheap, less than fifty pence a blade, and uh, you stick them into the Mercury Future. I'm taking it back up again. You stick into the Mercury Future. And it shaves really well, and it's a bit of a mystery, really. I'm not, I'm not fully, I'm not fully, co you know, cognizant, cognizant on why, why that. Oh, that's the case. The other thing about the maker future as well is that it does your neck really well. It'd be interesting to see whether the slant is any better. I have a little tiny. I'll oh, just graze, graze myself a little bit there. I have a little tiny bit that is very hard to get rid of. There you go. But it gets the neck incredibly, incredibly smooth. You can't go over there a little bit though, and you do end up getting a little bit of, bit of razor there. But the sides of the face is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Okay. Okay, we're nearly done. A little bit of a nicky thing there. It's not really a nicky thing. It's more the fact that press too hard. The other thing about the, the other thing about the makers, well, because it's like quite heavy, you do hang on to it a bit too hard. It's, I think you're going to develop a, a looser technique. But I hope you're all following all this, and it's all interesting. Oh, look at that blood! Blood. Um, I'm gonna use a little st stick on this down. Yeah. I'm going to try and find some of this locally. See what the uh, supermarket has it. Rub it in. Pat it down. 
<coughs> and then finally, um, well next to finally, a bit of uh, cream, moisturising cream. So don't forget the Facebook group, it's uh, The Big Shave on Facebook. Join it, leave some comments, do some links to videos, whatever, whatever turns you on, whatever floats your boat. Okay, let's take them off. So that's the end of that one, big shave, it's uh, Wednesday the 7th of uh, September, don't think I mentioned at the beginning, and we used a Maker Future with its head missing, and we used a simple cheap Derby Extra Blade, oh, I think my phone's ringing downstairs, so I'm going to have to go now, so we go back from me Steve Farrick with the big shave, uh, carry on shaving, carry on asking questions, carry on improving your technique, like I do, bye bye.